We are looking at how we can maximize uh, Ghana's uh, potentials when it comes to our festivals. A number of festivals in the country, uh, notably, you know, I mean, the ones that are everywhere, um, Homo War, Ugafi, Tuafashe, Abuacha, Hogba Chocho, Afsafo Tufi, I mean, and all of those others. And we want to know how we could be able to, to make it better, how we could make it a huge tourism attraction for us to rake in more money, have more tourists coming into the country. And so join us on the table this afternoon is a Deputy Corporate Affairs uh, Manager at the Ghana Tourism Authority. That is our very good friend Kofi Atakusi Kakra, who is joining us here in studio. And then later via Zoom, we'll get to speak to Mani K. He's an on-air personality with ATLFM in Cape Coast. He'll tell us also about the Ogafi Tofashe as a, a tourism a, a, an enthusiast what he feels uh, or how he would rate what happened last week, what we could do better better with the Ogwa uh, Fetu Afasha. So let's get into it. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Bro, thank you. I'm grateful. Yeah, good to, good to have you here. Yes, uh, in total, do we have a number of, uh, a total number of festivals you have in the country? For now, you know, um, we are a diverse culture, mm. a diverse people. So we have a lot of festivals that are still coming up. Okay. So it would be difficult to say we have this number of no festivals. Matter, okay. But of course, we all know the um, very prevalent ones. Of course, Fetu Afashe, Asogli Yam Festival, yeah. um, and a, a host of oh, others. Okay. okay, all these are very important. And we are positioning it in such a way that Ghanaians will appreciate it it's been um, one potential that is going to push up our domestic tourism more especially. Mm. You, you were in Cape Coast together yeah. with the CEO, um, the Deba Day, that was on, on Saturday. Yeah. You saw everything that happened. How would you um, rate also the, the Fetu Afashe this year if you were to tell someone your experience over the weekend? My dear brother, let me say that, um, let me once, one, first and foremost commend uh, Metro TV for the hard work you put in. At least you have shown resilience in making sure that um, our festivals are brought to the fore and to the game for people to understand why we need to celebrate our own festivals. Because the festivals, of course, brings about our culture, our heritage, our origin, our history. Mm. There was a lot that you could learn. Whilst I was sitting up there, you could imagine what I was saying in my head. Wow, so we have all these um, history around the fact that these festivals are not just we going to, 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 to party, right? But oh. it has a lot that could be tapped from it. Seeing people from all walks of life. And do you know, what happens is that our festivals brings us together as one people, mm. right? The Fetu Afasha was there. CEO was there. My brother, you could imagine the numbers that were there. Right. And we say that with domestic tourism, what we're doing is that is to use domestic tourism to be able to get the numbers, bringing in more numbers, and then also encouraging our um, teaming public and the youth to appreciate our history, our heritage, and all that. Now, as it happened, so you realize that there were a number of people who were also there um, selling their wares, mm. right? Arts, crafts, and food. Uh, music, there was dance. So all these encompassed in one. This tells us as a nation during COVID. Let me use COVID as an example. In the time of COVID, you realize that we could not do anything outside of our own country. Yeah. So it is our own. We need to protect our own and appreciate what our own does for us. So that is why the Ghana Tourism Authority has earmarked the month of September as tourism month. Mm. In that way, what we are doing is to push more in terms of our festivals, right? In terms of our events and activities that brings us more revenue. One, we call something redistribution of income amongst the citizenry. For example, with Fetu Afache, a lot of people, like I mentioned early on, are selling number of products and then there were a number of activities all going. All these, there is redistribution of income, those in, even in the tour bars had some money into their pockets. So wow. tourism, like we say, it is multi-sectorial. It brings all the sectors of the economy together and we are able to see a realization of a buoyant tourism economy. Mm. Okay, so I want to find out what initiatives uh, or programs are in place to, I mean, promote and market Ghana's festival to both domestic and international markets. Good. What we have done, if you do recall, 
um, during the first part of uh, this year, and uh, what we did was to be able to put together what we call an enhanced form of our Experience Ghana, mm -hmm. Share Ghana Agenda, which is a domestic tourism okay. initiative. With this initiative, what we have done is to be able to get our tourism value chain. If I say the tourism value chain, what I mean is the stakeholders involving the Tour Operators Union of Ghana, the Tour Guides Association, the Ghana Hotels Association, the Youth in Tourism, Kids in Tourism. All these are encompassed into one box. Okay. So we bring them together and then push that initiative for us to reignite the fact that we as a people have to take our festivals very seriously. So they have, what we have done is to have these um, bodies, the tourism stakeholders, have a number of packages that they are pushing Ghanaians or have, using these packages to make Ghanaians appreciate and go to these festivals. When we were there, we saw a number of our tour operators there. Right, they brought a number of tourists, some coming from the diaspora, people of African descent, and then visitors who are in the country. So this is, these are some of the things that we are doing. And then also, we are also using the media mm -hmm. so that Ghanaians will also patronize our own festivals. Like I mentioned early on, during COVID, it taught us a lesson. Mm -hmm. So we were all um, alert on the fact that we need to do our own better. That is how come the Ghana Tourism Authority has put the whole month of September as Tourism Month. As Tourism Month, we are bent on making it um, something that has come to stay with Guineans okay. to promote domestic tourism. As we promote it, it gives jobs, employment, and then creates revenue. Oh. This year, for example, we are expected to have close to about 1.2 million tourists, and that will rake in about $3.4 billion wow. into the economy. I, I, I like everything that you have said. Mm. But one thing that I was thinking about, especially with the geography to our show, is that does the GTA play in a, a role in the activities that are lined up for these festivals? Because, of course, it is for culture. The people want to do the things that, will, that would uh, bring out their culture and all that. But also, there's a bit where it needs to be extra attractive to get others to be involved. And that's what the GT, as you mentioned, seeks to do. So how is it done? Is there a meeting with the organizing committee of any festival and the GTA? Do you have input in that? Tell us about it. Good. Thank you. I'm so grateful. And um, this is a very important question, which, of course, um, our, our public would like to know what we do. What happens is this. We always usually are part of the planning committee. Okay. Right. And, for example, um, the Hogbechocho Za that yeah. is upcoming, yeah. um, a letter has been brought to the Ghana Tourism Authority for us to be part of the, the planning committee. Mm. Once you're part of the planning committee, what we push in there is the domestic tourism aspect and then also the preservation of our culture and heritage as a people so we don't lose it. Mm. Right. When, once we lose, you see, um, I, I, always, I always use uh, Marcos Mosiah Gave being a Pan-Africanist as an example where he says that if we lose our past, then we lose our history, right? So, so it is very important for us to be able to use that and then be able to push the domestic tourism aspect in there. Now, you, you realize that there are a lot that the Ghana Tourism Authority discusses during those meetings, mm -hmm. okay? What we have done is to take it step by step, mm -hmm. right? In as much as people might expect um, a number of... Um, let's say, initiatives being pushed in there, yeah. right? These initiatives, uh, some, I would say, were replicated during uh, the Oguafe to Afasha, and then some also, what we have done is to look at the way forward, the way forward to be able to put some of these in perspective and then see how best to implement it. So more like it's on the drawing table. Some are on the drawing table where we are looking at giving new looks to these festivals because we've realized that some of these festivals um, take the same trends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. yeah. They are always the same trend, the same trend, the same trend. So what we are doing is to position it in such a way that it becomes more attractive to our diasporans, people of African descent, and tourists and visitors who come into our country. For example, um, that's what I mentioned that we, we usually, we have brought in the tour operators so they are able to bring tours so these tours go to these festivals. Mm. Once they are at these festivals, what they do is to be able to take them 
within the tourist sites. They take them to the tourist sites and attractions that are ongoing, okay. that, that are within the, where the festival is ongoing. Okay. So that also sells our tourist site. As it sells our tourist site, what does it do? It, 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 it grants us what? Enough revenue. Yeah. And I, I asked that because um, we took a, a look at the lineup of activities for the Ogoafi to Afashe. And uh, it was some way for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was some way for me. You know, it was, of course, it was, yeah, say it, my it brother, was, yeah. was more cultural based. I understand that, a yeah. bit of it. But then I also felt that we are in you know, new times where more additions could be added to yeah. it. Right. Understand? Because right. the Friday, I know there were comps tonight and all of those things. Right. The Friday, there was a, a pacification of the gods and all of those Absolutely. things. So of course, that's culture. That's the bit of it. Yeah. And even with the case of Cape Coast, mm -hmm. uh, the Orange Friday, as is widely celebrated, is not part of the official lineup of activities. That may not be yours. Mm. That may be the organizers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we are part of the organizers, so we, yeah. we, we, yes. we are with them. Yeah. So the Orange Friday is not part of the lineup of activities for the Ogwafi to Afashe. It is, it, is, it, is, it is usually, it is usually part of it. It is part of it in the sense that... Um, what well, unofficially. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know Desi, what, what, what it is is that officially, unofficially, Right. Um, these are words you may want to play with, right? But but the fact the fact is that it was celebrated, isn't it? Well, On that Friday, isn't it? Yes. But you see, yeah. if it is, well, I understand that bit. But if it is yeah. officially part of the lineup, yeah, then it makes it you know more common. I I don't know how to put it, but yeah. 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 So it's not like it's a private person's thing mm -hmm. and happening. But anyways, we will get Good. on to so, Zoom. So that's it. Zoom very these, soon. these these are these are some of the initiatives that we uh, as a as a as a as an authority mm -hmm. we try as much as possible to listen in and then see how best to also give our um ideas in and then some ideas from the media like you have noticed you were there with your team and all that so in noticing this once it comes to the fall of the ghana tourism authority we also take it into careful consideration and then also make it as part of the official as you say it's unofficial of course it was even discussed at the planning committee meeting mm. yeah all those are discussed at the planning committee meeting but like you said it's it's unofficial but it's of official yeah. okay that's okay. why i know you want to go on zoom but mm. let me just find out from him you see right now most of the the americans or foreigners um, even Africans in the diaspora have understood that, um, let's say, Ghana is a destination for yes, investment and yes. development. And now, most of these people come in in December only, like most, because you mentioned one million tourists coming down, and that's <laughs> very impressive. We love that. But after December, we move into a new year. There are so many festivities in different months. Isn't there a deliberate agenda to make sure that these foreigners, these African diasporas who understand that right now the investment and development is in Ghana, can't we have an agenda to make them interested in these festivities that are going on? Has the GTA done anything towards that? Good. Thank you. That's a very good question. Let me say that that is why you would realize that we have an agenda and a project which we call Destination Ghana Project. Okay. The Destination Ghana Project was launched by the Honorable Minister, Dr. Wal. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it's a project that what we have done is to position Ghana as the center of the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we do, we don't leave our private sector out okay. anytime we are doing some of these programs mm -hmm. what we do is to engage our tourism mm -hmm. value chain so with the destination Ghana project it aims at bringing in these diasporans and tourists not only for December okay we have unleashed the 92 events um, so far but of course more will be added mm -hmm. for yeah. December that is for November and December, December, right? That is there. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the usual holiday. Making Ghana the holiday destination. destination yeah. In making Ghana the holiday destination, mm -hmm. um, we don't only um, expect them to come and party, but they invest into uh, the course, economy. Of Good. Course. Now, important. in doing that, destination Ghana is a project that every now and then the Ghana Tourism Authority and the Ministry is involved in fairs and exhibitions. What we do is this. WTM in London, World Travel Market in London, you will find the marketing department um, and some other officers of the authority going for these fairs. Okay. Once they go for these fairs, what they do is to engage 
engage the diaspora yeah. community and even engage tourists mm -hmm. to come in. Come so you would realize that, like I mentioned early on, the tour operators bring tourists to Fetu Afashe. Mm -hmm. It is also part of the Destination Ghana project. Ghana project. So they bring them to appreciate and be part of it. Mm -hmm. In launching um, September, September as Tourism Month, mm -hmm. it has been floated out there okay. to the, the diaspora community. Mm -hmm. So most of them will be coming for that. Mm -hmm. Let me, a case in point is Chalewati Festival. Yeah. Right. You look at Chalewati Festival. We had a number of diasporans come in, close to about 100,000. Mm. So you would, you would realize that at any point in time, any of our festivals, events, and activities mm -hmm. that have been earmarked, okay. we have a deliberate attempt to bring in the, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the, the, the tourists the tourism. in. So, um, December, because December is that huge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because of December in GH as part of year of return beyond the return. Mm -hmm. That is why it is, it is prevalence out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But all throughout the year, we have mapped up strategy, even during the Ghana month, mm -hmm. during the Ghana month where we celebrate our Made in Ghana yeah, product eat and Ghana, service. Ghana. Eat Ghana, see Ghana, yeah. eat, wear Ghana, and feel Ghana, yeah. right? And then the experience Ghana, share Ghana agenda. What we have done is to position it so that a lot of people will be able to come in, experience our tourist sites, and then all that we have as a country. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. I, I think let's let's get on Zoom right. and then we can let him go and then we continue with that conversation. Right. Yeah. Um, we're going to Cape Coast and speaking to Manike. He's an honor personality um, in Cape Coast. Manike, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, Desi. Great. Um, straight into it. Um, this year's Fitu Afasha for you. How did it go? Um, thank you very much. I think um, it was one of the best celebrated event in Central Region. Um, before 2020, we were just reluctant as to celebrating the festival because of COVID, but eventually uh, we had a chance to celebrate and the influx of people from all across the world, you know, into Central Region and Cape, because I think that is one thing that we can commend ourselves for, because still, Fetu Afasha stands out as one of the uh, most celebrated uh, festivals in Ghana. So for me, on a scale of 100, I would say that um, I think we did an eight, close to nine over 10. Mm, and eight, that's amazing. But yeah. um, of course, uh, in as much as it was good, there will be certain things that you, you think that we could work on. What are some of the things that you saw that you thought we could improve or upon coming in next year? Okay, um, I think that the alcoholic beverages, uh, we can't do without them though, but uh, during the procession on Friday, Orange Friday, I saw some of them throwing out um, you know, the beverages in the crowd. And of course, we had kids, uh, you know, some below the age of 18, uh, you know, fighting for such products, you know, amongst the, the crowd. And for me, I think that was a turn off because uh, we're not supposed to be promoting that it should be beyond 18 and above. So if we can find a way of um, making these things happen the right way, that would be the best for me. And then two, um, with the Orange Friday, I think there's a tussle, there's still a tussle between the uh, traditional council and that of the organizers of um, Orange Friday. Uh, I believe that if we are able to solve the issue once and for all, I had you ask um, a resource person that is not officially part of the event and, you know, yeah, diplomacy sake. It, it, he answered it in a very diplomatic way. Um, it's not part of it. There's, there's still a tussle between the two, the two entities, but we are hoping that um, we come to a consensus so that we can add it to the event proper proper when that is done i think that we can uh forcefully find our way through and then push the agenda up for so mm. uh there were no problems actually there were no problems security was tight everybody you know uh that came through to make sales enjoy themselves and i believe that if we are to go on with that as now we are going to be a force to work on with mm. I, before you go i i thought that there could have been um some you know concerts you know the concerts that happened were more private you know uh, yeah bars doing their own thing but as a as a organizing team or for the afasha itself there could have been some here and there or what do you think yeah i agree i agree i was even looking at a food a food bazaar a food festival all mm. those that happened are pockets of entities that came out there to do their own thing so i'm looking at uh, possibly next year the traditional um, council or the organizers of the photo of fashion would have a big food bazaar because when you come to Cape Coast, there are a lot of meals that we can eat uh, that uh, into tea, there's uh, Fante Fante, there's a, a lot of them. So we can have a food bazaar after um, the, the Deba on Saturday. And then also with a concert, 
Orange Friday, we can eat around Orange Friday because after the procession from Abra through to the principal streets to the, to the destination, which is the London Bridge or uh, um, Chapel Square, um, we have an event that happens there. That's the concert. But I'm looking at a bigger venue, say a stadium, where we'll be flying out colors orange and white, throwing or playing with light, having people from Kakomdo, Pedu, um, in Toto, um, Kawan or Pado, Skafam, Bantam, all displaying their little bits of culture, you know, with their music, folkloring, mm. storytelling at the stadium, so that we can project that event hugely to corporate Ghana and even across Africa. Because if you go to Nigeria, the Calabar is big. We we'll talk about it here. But after 10 years of celebrating Orange Friday, I think it's still amongst us. We need to put it out there. And how can we do that? We can only do that if we have a bigger spectrum. We open up the entity for people to come in and then put in ideas. So it's good. But I believe that we can still do more with Orange Friday. And I, I'm, I'm throwing um, this message out there. If, if the Ghana Tourism Authority would, would, would buy into it, we can you know, merge or come together and then push the agenda and make Orange Friday a big selling commodity for, for Ghana. OK, Manike, thank you so much for speaking to us here. Um, so Manike, uh, Mr. With Tell FM, in Cape Coast, and he's a tourism enthusiast. And talking about the alcoholic beverages, as walk from Pedu Junction past Sudo to the Metro Mass area, we counted at least five people as at 7 p.m., 5 p.m., uh, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., who were lying by the roadside. Young people, <laughs> that's, they had to be pouring water on them and doing all of this. You see, and so that one I was going to mention, the alcoholic say, beverages, right? they, they are not looking at Above it, you know, I could be allowed to do it. Why let it be? So, look, that that yeah. so um, for me, that bit is, it was a minus. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was yeah. a minus. Yeah. Helen, you yeah. wanted to come in, right? I mean, um, you know, festivals, you all know that there yeah. are so many important sometimes, even uh, with conflict uh, resolutions, among others, and um, yeah. it's also promote tourism, like we mentioned earlier. Right. But then there is the Thanksgiving, and usually for lesser gods and some you know in the case where we are trying to promote these festivals even to other people out there but this is the case where some people even here in ghana wouldn't want to be a part sometimes they are celebrating home or someone is a gun but wouldn't go for the festival because of some of these things now we are trying to make it more attractive to people in here and out there can we take some of these things out of the festival is it even possible <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> i like i like this <laughs> you see we are a people of diverse culture, right. history, and heritage. I would say that it is important for us to respect each other's history, culture, and heritage. Yeah. So there are some of these um, cultural preservations that we need to do. We need to preserve our culture. It is our culture, and some of these things, I would say that um, if it doesn't suit you, just pull out. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Um, we cannot stop it. It is our culture as a people. I am a Pan-Africanist and a cultural activist, right? I believe in the fact that we as a people, personally, I'm speaking for myself personally, right. I believe in the fact that we as a people must um, take our culture as one of our own okay. and appreciate our traditions. These are our traditions. And once the tradition dies, right, if you are not careful, the festival dies. Trust me. So it is very important for us as a people to appreciate what we have. It is an appreciation of us and our history. Um, if you care to know, um, most of our diasporans, people of African descent, tourists and visitors, would come into our country just to experience some of these cultures and traditions. They come in for just that. You'll be surprised. True. Some may not even go to some of the tourist sites. Right. They may want to see how do you people do it, mm -hmm. right? How do you connect with these um, gods? I don't have a problem with African traditional religion, not at mm -hmm. all, right? We are a country of diverse religious sects. Traditional religion, we live together. Islamic religion, we live together. Christian religion, we live together. So as one people, I personally will say that it is something that we should look at it and then appreciate each other's culture. Do you know why these festivals um, brings a lot of people? The reason being that somebody would like to go to Fetua Fashe, would like to experience the people. In right. experiencing the people, there are some deeper things of the people the person may want to be attracted to. 
some of our diasporans during the year of return decided that they would get to their motherland and then have what we call naming ceremonies. These naming ceremonies, um, sometimes they are taken to the shrines. Okay, they would love to experience that. These are authentic, these are things that um, I would say that um, they are authentic to our culture and tradition as a people. So um, for me, for me, I would say that this is something that we need to preserve as a people. Let us preserve our heritage. It is our heritage that drives us as a people. And that is what we sell out to there. Um, somebody also would say that if you look at the slavery that happened, right. mm -hmm. good. The slavery has turned into a different thing that Ghana now, as part of the year of return, beyond the return, is gaining enough recognition in terms of our Pan-African legacy. Yeah. Why are we gaining that recognition? The reason being that it was a bad thing, isn't it? Yeah. Right. It was a bad thing. It, it was. But we are gaining a lot of recognition for it. Why? Because it connects with our roots and our history. One of the biggest things that happens to tourism is culture. Culture is the foundation of the tourism that we are doing. Without culture, there is no tourism, trust me. Yeah. Without, yes, without culture, there is no tourism. Okay. okay. Right. Um, are there plans to expand or create new festivals? Thank you. That's a very good question. As part of the Ghana Tourism Development Project, what we have done is to put together um, a, a paper so that we are able to expand some of um, our, our, our major events mm -hmm. and festivals. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. You would realize that some of these festivals are not known. Okay, so what we have done is to be able to put up this paper, mm -hmm. and this paper is going to help us to be able to go to the drawing table and see some of these lesser known festivals. Okay. Yeah. Right, that Ghanaians don't know too much about. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, what, what will happen is that we have our regional offices across the length and breadth of the country. Um, if it goes to Western, we have our regional office there. Um, Eastern, Ashanti, Greater Accra, Volta, everywhere. So our regional directors and our offices are always in that, um, that um, kind of, um, uh, they are always part of the planning committee okay. of these festivals that happens within. So we are trying to package, that is why we earmark September as tourism month. September has a lot of festivals. Right, and the number of activities that go on. So they are there to help shape some of these festivals. In doing that, don't forget also that the tourist sites and attractions are also very important for us. So we have the tourist sites and attractions regulations, LI 2393, that is helping to be able to register and license these tourist sites so that when people go for these festivals, even funerals, right, even funerals, when people go for funerals, they visit our tourist sites and attractions. Mm -hmm. So once you go for these festivals and funerals, it helps to connect with our tourist sites. So some of these tourist sites are being put into the right perspective by LI2393 so that we can have a holistic tourism enclave to be able to have a buoyant tourism economy. Okay. Finally, before we wrap up, we are seeking the whole investment from other people elsewhere. But is corporate Ghana involved? Have they shown interest? Over the years, we see the Ghana Tourism Authority uh, engaging stakeholders to come on board. Have corporates Ghana or companies shown interest that they want to be part of the process, whereas not really the, uh, the GTA has to go to them. They themselves as corporates Ghana, have they shown interest? Do they want to be part of it? Good. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad for this question. Um, one thing is that the Ghana Tourism Authority has... Um, through the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, has created what we call an enabling environment mm -hmm. for corporate Ghana. Yeah. The reason being that most of these um, corporate entities would like to connect with some of the activities that take place within a country. Mm -hmm. For example, festivals. Mm -hmm. For example, December and GH events and activities. Right. Um, what they do is to pitch camps with these activities. Yeah. So once we create the enabling environment mm -hmm. as an authority, yeah. Like I have mentioned, we have put up what we call the Tourism Month activities, yeah. mm -hmm. which involves a number of events and activities like mm -hmm. paragliding festival. As I'm speaking with you, some of the corporate um, um, entities and individuals are coming on board for the paragliding, paragliding. festival yeah. and then some of the festivals. Some of them come to us and we link them mm -hmm. to the organizers of these festivals. right? And then December and GH events and activities. Yeah. Once it is put out there, corporate Ghana 
descends on them. So corporate Ghana sometimes would even want to know mm -hmm. what whether they are they are licensed by the authority. Mm -hmm. So with that, we also tell them yes, this is something we have done, and we 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 we, we expect that you will do what you will support them. Okay. Some of the times we even go and and fish out some of these sponsorships and then unleash mm -hmm. to the events and then the festivals. Okay. Nana, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, then we wrap up. We'll talk about future plans briefly, and then we wrap it up. Welcome back. Uh, so much we're going to wrap up the conversation. Our guests are Kofi Kakra Atakusi. Deputy Head of Corporate Affairs as a G, at the GTA. Um, Kofi, let's wrap up. Um, in less than a minute, what's your outfit coming up this month as a tourism month? And we're going to um, Ujura, the Sogochuchus are coming, or the, what are the plans for it? Thank you, bro. I'm so grateful. Um, let me say that it's you, the media, who would put it out there. So we are very grateful for the support that you've been giving us. Of course, um, we've had free to our fashion. We've had a number of events and activities, Akwesidai, uh, Kesi Festival. And then now, what, what we are doing is to connect sports with tourism also, where we have the African Para Games mm -hmm. ongoing. What we have done is to be able to position tourism as part of it. Right, so it is part of the tourism month events and activities that have been put in place. Then also, you know, today um, Ghana is repping yeah. um, with, 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 our, with our, our, our African brothers. Also, it is also part of the events and activities that have been outlined. Um, we are trying to position, like I mentioned, sports with tourism. And then we have a number of um, activities also. We have Bobobo Infante Amanse Festival. We have the Kundum Festival yeah. that will also be taking place. And then also Ohum Festival. Mm. We have Miss Tourism Ghana. We have Womane Africa Wear Festival. Black Star Vibes. We have a Fun and Fly Paragliding Festival. We're going to have a second paragliding festival aside that which takes place in during the Easter festivities. Okay. This one is going to involve corporate Ghana. Like, okay. like my dear sister indicated. They talked about corporate is, Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so that would be there. And then we have Taste of Peru help work. Okay. Go be, go be, yeah. if, I, if I leave you. Nah. you, you, you <laughs> but, but we are wrapping up. We are going. We are going. We are going. I have um, the World Tourism Day that will be on 27th of September okay. under the Team Tourism and Green Investment. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very We'll do this. Um, again, so mm. Kofika Kratakusi is uh, Deputy Head Corporate Affairs at the GT. Many thanks for watching. Uh, this afternoon, uh, Nanaya Tanabwachi, Harry Tadi, Helen <laughs> K. I am Desi Fading. We are back tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. Bye bye.